So I guess this is the next stage in uh, owning the forklift is diagnosing uh, how we can make it run better. So I noticed that after I did the oil change, it was burning a lot of oil. So it kind of leads me to think that there's an issue with the uh, valve seals. So when I poured all the oil into the cylinder valve cover, it probably leaked into the cylinders through the valve seals. It doesn't seem like it has a lot of blow by. Maybe you put your hand on here, nothing really happening. Although the uh, carburetor is drawing off of the uh, tank as well, possibly. I'll have to follow this, uh, these tubes here and see where they go. But, uh, I noticed that like, it's loading up when you try to hit the gas. Like, there's a lot of fumes right now. It's not running very well. So I have to take the spark plugs out. I'll do uh, an initial compression test. Then we're going to uh, see about setting the lifters on this if that's possible. There is a spec in the book. And then we'll do another compression test and see how it runs. I'm thinking the carburetor probably needs some attention as well. And I don't know how much gas is in the tank. That could be an issue. So uh, we'll hop in and start doing that. So I should be able to find a compression tester in the shop here somewhere. And then uh, I'll just show you how I was lubricating the chains. Because that's something that hadn't been done in quite a while. So it turns out that, that it's pretty easy to do. So I just have this thing here and if you put a bit of oil on the chain just like that it'll just follow down the chain you don't need to lubricate the whole chain one link at a time it'll eventually follow it all the way down so you just have to do it on both sides of the uh, roller another chain another stage of the mast up above I can't really tilt the camera that way so anyway, we'll start working on the engine and pick away at other things as we're going along. All right, so I couldn't find my compression tester. I only found my leak down tester. So I can use that to do the uh, valve seal replacement. But uh, the spark plugs are certainly fouled. And the uh, manual here, it gives you a couple things to look for. So for the... Uh, the valves are supposed to be 15 thousandths when they're hot. So I'm gonna check those right now. And then the uh, spark plug gap is supposed to be uh, 28 thou. So I'll go over those and check them. Now, to take a look at the engine, you can't bar it over from the fan. It's uh, plastic and it's not, it doesn't grab onto the uh, belt very well. I got the uh, spark plugs out and uh, to bar it over you can just use a screwdriver in this hole and you can just uh, engage the flywheel and it's easy enough to turn. So I'll be checking the uh, valve gap on the uh, far side and adjusting it with uh, the lock screw on this side. So. Uh, I'll go and find my uh, fielder gauges, hopefully they're available, and then we'll uh, do that to 38 thou. Alright, so I just went through and I adjusted all the valves, so I'll try to do a demonstration of uh, what I did. So I don't do this very often, so I'm not trying to be fast with it, but basically all you do is uh, you're looking for valves that are at the where the cam is at the top of its, or the bottom of its motion. So you're looking for where you've got the most gap possible. So you're looking for 15 thou. And uh, so this one is set. To do it, all you do is uh, use a 14 millimeter and a flathead screw. You hold the uh, screw open the jam nut. It doesn't take much. So you can kind of just be turning the screw that far has made it tight. So right now it's got a nice amount of drag and 
just a tiny little bit jams it up. So I don't want to have a lot of uh, drag. It's a feeler gauge, so you're supposed to feel that you're close. So I leave it a little bit loose, put the wrench back on, and uh, tighten the wrench down now. That should give me 15 thou now when it's set. That's, that's perfect. So basically, I just look for the ones that are at the top of their motion. This one is another example where it's got the full amount of gap. And uh, you just want to bar over the engine maybe twice or a couple times more than that. Whatever it takes for you to be comfortable to know that you've got the right amount of gap. I'm just doing this by eye. You could look at uh, where the position of the piston is and things like that. But just uh, check it a couple times. Make sure you got it when it was uh, the full gap was there. And then check around and see if there's any others in the uh, same situation. So you think that there's going to be two cylinder or one cylinder on compression stroke at any given time, and if one valve might be an overlap if you're doing an intake or what have you. So you just like I said, you go over it and make sure that they all have that gap because you wouldn't want one that never has a gap. Like right now, this one is opening the valve so there's not going to be any gap. But you know that when it gets back around it's going to uh, fully open up as the other valve starts to go. So we're getting close now. We've got a little bit of play there as that valve starts heading down. You should be on the cam at the right place to get where you can check for your 15 valve. This one's maybe just a touch more than 15 valve. I checked initially and some of them were at 25 valve. So I know that you can go pretty far. So just go through at the beginning and see where they are initially and make sure that you're comfortable with measuring and then once you kind of get the hang of it you'll be able to check the and adjust them and it's, like I said it's pretty easy to adjust you just use a 14 mil and a flathead screw and uh, put them where they need to be it's not too hard and then go all the way through and make sure that when you're done that they all have a gap at some point so that you know that they're all opening because you wouldn't want them to stay closed all sorry if you didn't have a gap they'd always be open and that would burn uh, the seat on the valve or the face on the valve and you wouldn't want that so like I said you go through make sure you've got a gap when you're done don't forget your screwdriver in there that would certainly be a problem so I'm just going to go through and check my work one more time and then uh, put the spark plugs back in after I gap them and fire this thing up. So I got the uh, spark plugs back in their gap now at 30 thou. They were all quite a uh, far gap on them. The uh, valve cover gasket doesn't want to play along so I'm just going to leave it off briefly and we'll see how things go.
Sorry, it's getting a bit late in the evening, so I'm just going to turn that off. So, I think uh, things went pretty good. I still want to do a compression test, which is a problem because my compression tester is in storage somewhere. And I'm definitely going to do the uh, valve seals because there's no question that they've got a, a problem after the oil change. So I guess that's it for uh, setting the valves. So just a quick video today. So thank you for watching.